Keiko Higashino is a Japanese mystery author, one of the top authors in all of Japan. His books have had like a bajillion movies and TV shows. He's written a billion books, but only nine of them are translated into English, and then I think also an essay, but I haven't read that. But I read all nine of the English translated books in a span of about three months. Probably would have done it faster if I wasn't also in school, because they're addictive. Like, none of them are just like, oh, that was interesting. Like, they're all gonna draw you in. They're all intense. They're all unique. If you like mystery books, definitely read one of his books. If you don't like mystery books, you should still read one of his books because it might change your mind because they're the best of the best. <laughs> so I want to talk about them in a spoiler-free way. There might be like a minor spoiler like this one's darker than this one but like nothing concrete and I'm gonna rank them from my most to least favorite but by least favorite I still mean it's still one of my favorite books because they're all so great. So I'm gonna start at the bottom and then end on my favorite and at number nine is The Miracles of the Namiya General Store. This one is Keigo Higashino's latest English release. It was only released in September and I'd say it's like one of the most unique of his books. It's not anything like the other books and I would call it a sci-fi more than a mystery. This is about three delinquent boys who hole up in an old abandoned general store after committing a crime but they end up getting letters from the past asking for advice. It's really hard to talk about this book without being too spoilery but it's a lot about like the nature of choices, the directions your life can go depending on choices you take. Despite this being the lowest on my list I still really enjoyed it. I wanted to know what was gonna happen. I kept thinking about it throughout the day, just like all the others. If you do plan on reading Keiko Higashino books, I would not start with this one as it's not like his other books at all, but it is still very good. At number eight is A Midsummer's Equation, which is a murder mystery. It's set in a little seaside resort town, which is all the tourists and stuff, they're stopping coming and they're dwindling down, but then a mining operation wants to come to the town and like half of the town is like yeah that's gonna save us and the other half's worried about the environment and changes to their town. So these two factions have a town meeting to discuss things but it gets really tense and afterwards a corpse is found which turns out to be a former Tokyo police detective. So the murder mystery begins. The interesting thing about this is it's told from the perspective of a little boy whose parents are too busy so they send him off to their distant relatives and it's very interesting to watch this unfold from the eyes of like an innocent little child so there's some parts where he doesn't know what's going on, but you know what's going on, and you're like, oh shit, he doesn't know. At number eight, I have Salvation of a Saint. This is another murder mystery. It's told from the perspective of a lady whose husband was poisoned while she was millions of miles away. Probably not millions. I like exaggerating. I'm sorry. But anyway, so she's really far away, even though you know from the beginning, like the first couple pages, she has intent to kill her husband, and yet she's so far away and he still gets poisoned. So that makes for a really interesting mystery. I had a theory that I was like, I got this, I got this theory, I got it. I was like, partially right, but on the whole I was completely wrong. <laughs> it was very twisty. At number six I have Journey Under the Midnight Sun, which is the one I read last. I just finished this a few days ago. This one I would say is slightly different also. This one starts with a murder, surprise, surprise, but it doesn't get solved and then it follows for 20 years kind of the after effects of the murder and possibly solving the murder and it's very interesting in that the main characters we never see from their perspective, it's always from other people's perspective who kind of interact with them or know them and it goes through a lot of different narrators so it can be a little bit confusing because there's a lot of names to learn. I do have a warning about this one. There's like a couple disturbing things in some of the books like their murder mysteries it happens but this one is by far the most disturbing. Like it's got a lot of like explicit things of sexual nature like sexual assault and stuff. I did not really like those parts, but I did like the rest of the book. It was very interesting trying to figure out what the main characters were thinking, what their motivations were, without ever directly hearing for them. And in that way, this book is also different from anything I've ever read, and it is super fascinating. In fifth, I have Naoko, which I believe was the first of Keiko Higashino's books to be translated into English. Um, having said that, this has a different translator than a lot of the books, and I didn't love the writing style, but I loved the story and like the writing style wasn't so bad that like I couldn't read it obviously. I still loved it but there were some parts where I was like ugh that could be tweaked a little bit. This follows a little family, a wife, a husband, and a daughter. 
The wife and the daughter go to visit the wife's family and end up in a bus accident. And the husband is watching on the news, waiting to hear their names to see what happens. And he rushes to the hospital. They are both alive, but neither of them are conscious. Once in the hospital, the wife passes away, and the daughter is in a coma for a long time. When she wakes up, she doesn't really speak, but then after a while, she starts speaking exactly like the wife. She knows things the wife knows that the daughter should not know. She has all the same gestures. The husband who'd been mourning his wife is now mourning his daughter. He 100% believes that the spirit of his wife is in his daughter, and they have to find out how to live with that situation, the wife has to learn to go to school as like a, I think, middle schooler, elementary. She thinks she starts, the book follows a long time span, but it, they have to deal with that new issue. They can't tell anybody, and it's really, really weird. <laughs> it's really, really good, but it's really, really weird. It's like kind of a commentary on gender roles in Japan, and in general, kind of, and... It's so good, so weird, so good. There were some parts where I was like, oh yikes, I'm gonna have to, I can't do this. This book stressed me out, and I was like, I cannot stop reading this because I need to know what happens, and it's really, really, really good. Um, I should probably say more than really, really good when reviewing like books, you know, like things where they use words so beautifully, and I'm just like, it's really, really good, but like, I'm not an author, and it was really, really good, so. <laughs> Number four is Malice, which is, you guessed it, a murder mystery. So a best-selling novelist is found murdered in his home, even though he's in a locked room in a locked house. His wife and his best friend found him together. They both have solid alibis, or so it seems. <laughs> this is a mystery book, so it has twists, as mysteries do, and yet these twists blew my mind completely flipped my perspective multiple times. I never saw any of it coming. It's brilliant. It's fascinating. This one I read, I think, in two settings. It's so freaking good. This one may not be, like, my number one or anything, but this one, I think, is definitely one of the ones where you could start out as your first Keigo Higashino book. I might just be saying that because it was my first Keigo Higashino book, but I think it's very quintessentially Keigo Higashino. At number three, we have The Name of the Game is a Kidnapping, which has a very interesting cover, does it not? This is told from the perspective of a guy who works on big advertising cases, and he's working on this huge one, but he gets taken off the case by this new guy, and he's like, how dare you come in here and take me off? So he wants revenge on him, and he goes by his house to, like, see if he can get any dirt. He finds his daughter sneaking out of the house. His daughter turns out, like, wants to run away from home. So him and the daughter plot to pretend that he kidnapped her so that they can both get some money and revenge. It is also one of the ones where it's a different translator, and I didn't love the translation, but it's still my number three, so you can know it's still really, really good. It's just kind of, like, jerky sometimes. This one's very interesting because from the first couple pages, I hated the main character, and I didn't, like, want him to succeed, but I also wanted to see what was going to happen. This is another one I finished very fast. I finished them all fast, let's be real. There was a point in this book where I thought maybe this one would be like, eh, and I was like, I don't see where this could go. It went places. It went places, and it blew my mind, and now it's my number three. At number two, we have Newcomer, which is a murder mystery. <laughs> this one follows the murder of a woman who just moved to a new apartment in a new area. She had no known enemies, everybody liked her, so why was she murdered? Since there's no immediate suspects, since, like, everyone liked her, it follows the lives of everyone she interacted with, like, ever, and it's almost the story of the little town she lives in. Like, you get to see the baker she went to see in, like, a glimpse inside his life, or, like, the toy shop that's nearby her house. Despite this being my number two, I would say this one isn't one I'd recommend like first or to everyone. It's very different from his other books and I'd say it's almost wholesome and it struck a chord with me. Yet again, Keiko Higashino has written a book that's different from anything I've ever read. How many times am I gonna say that? I don't know. He's so original. Like all of his books have like such original premises or plots or twists and he always catches me off guard. 
so freaking good. And my number one Keigo Higashino book is The Devotion of Suspect X, his most popular. <laughs> I'm basic. No, it's his number one book for a reason. Holy crap. This one is a murder mystery, but you know who did it from the start, which is very interesting. It's a woman and her daughter who just escaped an abusive ex, and they're hiding out, trying to get away from him, and they're finally living a good life. She works at, like, a convenience store selling bento. Somehow the ex shows up, but the little daughter ends up murdering him. The woman does not want her daughter to be, like, labeled a murderer. She's like, I'll take the blame. But then their next door neighbor comes over and he's like, I know what happened and I'll help. And true to his word, he like destroys all the evidence, he puts out some like misleaders for the police. Instead of being like a book from the perspective of a detective looking for the murderer, you're in the perspective of the man who tried to mislead them and hoping the police don't figure it out. And also then the lady wonders like, what does this man want from me? Is he gonna like blackmail me? Like why did he help? It is so intense. The whole book I was like, oh god, I'm so anxious, I'm so anxious, what's gonna happen? Yet again, I'm gonna say, this is one of the most unique books I've ever read. It's so insane, so intense. Probably my favorite mystery book of all time. I could definitely recommend this as your first Keigo Higashino book. This one is phenomenal. Even if you're like not a mystery fan, I would kind of recommend it. And that's all the Keigo Higashino books. Now, a lot of them are movies or TV shows, like, I know that this one is a TV show, and I know that there's a movie of this one, and I know there's a movie of this one, and probably others. I've not watched any of them, so I can't, like, recommend them or say if they're good or, like, compare them to the books, but I will watch them because I really want to, and then I want to make a video about it, comparing them to the books and stuff, so that will be really fun. I would definitely consider him one of my favorite authors now, and I hope that they translate more of his books, or I just need to learn Japanese faster. I've been learning it, and I am reading books in Japanese, but it's like Aesop's Fables, like for little kids, so like, I'm nowhere near that level yet. But, hopefully, someday, if you like mystery books and you haven't read a Keigo Kinoshino book, you need to start right now. Just do it. Right now. I could keep rambling on about how good they are, but I am getting very tired. But if you've ever read a Keigo Kinoshino book, please tell me down below which one you read, and what you thought about it, and talk with me about the books because I want to talk about them and if you haven't read one please do read it and then talk to me about it <laughs> but <laughs>